Hey, I've got a great idea. Let's talk about religion. Have you ever noticed how in the book of Genesis, Cain gets jealous of Abel and then kills Abel and says it's a sacrifice to God, but God's not fooled and he gets mad because it was murder? But then later in the Bible, there's the story of Abraham and Isaac, where God tells Abraham to sacrifice his son. Abel almost goes through with it, but then God stops him at the last second while Abel has the knife out, and then Abel gets rewarded. On its face, do these not seem like slightly contradictory messages? Now not to worry, we're not here trying to refute the Bible. In fact, you can find thousands of opinions on these stories and how they're not irreconcilable pretty easily. The whole point is to get your noodles brewing, because today we're going to talk about my frenemy and yours, the Lawful Stupid Paladin. And also, how to make good characters feel like good people. Now before we really dive in, I want to talk about the alignment chart, because a lot of people are familiar with it, through memes if nothing else. But it's important to note that back in the day, D&D alignments had to do with who you served godwise. There were good gods and evil gods, and the alignment chart meant you were either working for a good god or an evil god, and if you were neutral, you hadn't picked the side. It wasn't really making a value judgment about whether or not your player was a good person necessarily. Chaotic good people might be fairly evil, lawful good people might also be fairly evil. The important thing was just that they did whatever it was they did in service of their god. Of course, the problem here is they should have called it something like lawful Ferengi versus lawful Klingon or whatever, instead of good versus evil, because that gave the impression that people were supposed to be making moral judgments. And inevitably, it became kind of like a, a moral alignment system, like, oh, my character is lawful good, which means I follow the laws and I'm a good person, which if you've ever played D&D, you know that the lawful good character is usually the most awful person in the group because they hate things that are fun. Regardless of all the alignment chart nonsense, I personally think that Lawful Stupid Paladin is an actual player archetype and you see it a lot regardless of whether or not the game has paladins or an alignment system. Usually it's a player who decides before the game begins, I'm going to play a good character, and that means I follow the rules and I also interpret the rules for everybody else, and I enforce them. I am the judge, jury, and executioner of what shall be fun, and if you disagree, you are legally bad. And depending on your group, this is either fine because no one is really talking to each other anyway, or it's catastrophic. Because let's consider legalese morality. I'm going to go back to that biblical example that I gave with Cain and Abel and then later Abraham and Isaac. Let's suppose that there weren't thousands of years of theology to help guide you and explain to you how those stories work. No one can actually tell you what morals you're supposed to take away from that. You have to make that decision in the moment entirely by yourself. Let's say because you're playing a fictional character with a fictional religion that no one has really talked that much about, and you don't even really have any parables because it would take a lot of work to write those down. Now, if you were someone writing a story and you were going to sell that story, you might look into religion. You might talk to a priest and ask them, you know, what have people said about this faith? How would someone who's like, uh, I don't know, a Templar of the faith, what would tradition dictate that they do? And, and how would they respect human life? Or would they even? You know, it, it says that Abel was allowed to kill his son because he thought God wanted him to, so that means I can kill people, right? And the priest would say, let me stop you there. And they might walk you through a few things. Okay, but most players, though, they're not trying to write a serious story. They're not doing a lot of background research on faith or, uh, you know, traditional theology or anything like that. They just sit down and they say, I'm going to be a good character, I have a legalistic interpretation of morality, and I'm going to enforce that interpretation. And you know where that interpretation comes from? Whatever they casually know, and whatever they can pull out of their butt while they're sitting there at the table. And that would be okay, but the thing is, is that usually when you play with other people, they're not trying to enforce a particular morality. They're kind of up for anything, they just want to have an adventure, tell a story, have fun. It's only the people who really want to be like a moral paragon who get really wrapped up in that, but then maybe don't examine how hard it is to be that. I personally almost never play a good, good character. They are hard work. I mean, there are so many angles you gotta consider. A villain? I can whip one of those out faster than you can blink. Give me a premise, I will make you a villain. I can play him right now. Just, just watch. Because a villain, a villain cares about himself. So all you need to know is about the villain. Once you've got the villain self figured out, you know what the villain cares about. But like a really, really good person, they care about other people. They care about the world around them, all kinds of things. 
And it's not just about what you decide before you start playing, they're an ongoing work. Just like real life, playing a good character takes a lot of patience and interest in being good. Now, luckily, a role-playing game only goes for, you know, the better part of a day, maybe, and not your entire life. So if you can keep up the energy to be constantly empathetic and caring about the world around you, then maybe you can play an actually good, good character in a role-playing game. It's worth the challenge to try it at least once. Personally, I find that I often fall back into kind of neutral tones because the people around me kill people, you know, for no reason. And uh, it it's hard to stay good in the face of that. But! I will let you guys in on the secret to a quick, good character. Compassion in action. Now, the action part is very important. You might have a sort of good-natured character if you're passively good, but you won't really be heroic unless you're active. Say, for example, you play someone you think that I'm a good character, and you're very nitpicky and critical of players that you think are doing bad things. Is that really what someone would say is a good person? Mostly, I'd call that annoying. To be truly good, you need to be thinking about solutions, proactive, positive solutions that get people where they want to be without necessarily destroying everybody. The compassion part comes in when you say, look, I want things, you want things, let's see if we can find common ground and both achieve something that makes us both better. And fundamentally, that should be the way that you attack almost every problem in the game if you want to be a good, good character and also a hero at the same time. You're just trying to make the world a better place, and you believe that everybody else wants the same. Of course, now here's where it gets hard. Realistically, that's not true. Sometimes, some differences are so large that you can't really come together. They can be directly contradictory, and that means that one side has to win. For example, you can't just be that player who tells everybody, no, we have to non-lethally disable all of our enemies forever. Because sometimes the enemy is like, I don't know, a soul-sucking vampire who has sold their soul to the devil and, and the only thing they want is your destruction. And of course, that's one of the morally clear-cut examples. What about when you have two parties that are, you know, normal human beings and they're just at an impasse that cannot be overcome with words? At that point, you may very well have to remorsefully take up arms and fight your fellow man. You don't have to enjoy doing it. You shouldn't feel vindicated. You should... I don't know, be thinking about like, oh, how could we have done this better? Maybe have your character hang up on it. Think about it as a learning opportunity. I wish that that hadn't gone the way that it did. Setbacks are real. Setbacks don't make the character bad necessarily. Just because they couldn't find the best path forward doesn't mean that they're not a good person. The world, even fantasy world, is kind of a bad place, and there's a lot of bad situations. One reason to have your character hung up on it is because if you ever start to fall back into the excuse that, well, there was nothing I could do, eventually you'll start to become kind of an evil character because you'll be wearing a moral face while always excusing yourself for resorting to violence and murder and destruction. This can be fun to play, but, uh, you know, preferably you go into that knowing that's what you're doing rather than touting yourself as the only good guy in the party and then being just as bad as everyone else. The good, good guy is not about himself. He's about everybody else. And it's almost kind of tragic, really. Because no one quite gives back as much as the good, good guy puts in, and the good, good guy just keeps going anyway. And you know, it's not just me who almost never plays this. Personally, if I try to take a crack at something like this, I will start with the idea of Ronald McDonald Charity House. But then I quickly devolve into Ronald McDonald because it's much funnier to take off my giant big red shoe and hit people in the face with it. It makes a squeaky sound when I kill you. I mean, heck, what's not to love about that? Last video, I asked you guys to tell me stories about that loner rogue, and I got some interesting stories. This is my favorite thing about talking to role players. Pretty much as soon as you say, tell me about your game, or tell me about your setting, tell me about your character, you get endless replies, and some of them are pretty good. So we're gonna do that again. This time, I want to hear about times that you guys played with the Lawful Stupid Paladin. How did you resolve it? Because personally, I don't handle it well. I admit I usually eventually yell at the Lawful Stupid Paladin. I'm just trying to kill people with a giant big red shoe. I'm not evil, okay? But so help me, if you cross me, I will give you the shoe. In fact, I once had a game get so bad that the entire premise got flipped around to be about how the Lawful Stupid Paladin was kind of the villain of the setting and everyone was mad. It was a terrible game. It's a whole story by itself, and maybe I'll tell it later, but in a nutshell, the lawful stupid paladin just kept asking me if my character could really say he was a good guy, and I kept asking, what does it mean to be good? 
and eventually the answer was not your character, and also definitely not mine. I killed so many people, I broke so many laws, and here's one thing, I'm gonna let you guys in on the biggest secret of all. It takes a lot of emotional maturity to play a good, good character. You can play someone who follows a set of like listed rules in your head or whatever, and that won't necessarily make you good. It might make you an antagonist at times. And just because you cooperate with the NPCs or, or you're likable, it also doesn't necessarily make you that virtuous. You might be a fun person or a likable person, but as far as like whether or not you're a, a paragon, well, that's a whole different level. But hey, even if you try the character just once and it doesn't work out for you, the good, good character would tell you it's nice that you tried at least. 